I mean, again. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends. Let us have some good time together. And as you see, I'm perfectly on time as usual. We are Arab. We never late. And uh, Prophet Muhammad, he taught us to be always to be on time. And this is why, you know, uh, uh, you know, when uh, Jibril he promised him to come and see him. Uh, always Jibril he we came on time, but one day there was a dog under the bed, and he was dead. And then Jibril could not get in. Uh, he wasn't late. He was watching there outside. And because of that, uh, Jibril could not get in the house of Muhammad because it makes sense. There is a dog, there is a puppy. And uh, I wanted to go inside YouTube, but you know, I noticed there is a dog. I opened YouTube and then I saw like a puppy and I said, what the heck, how I can get in now, you know? So I was waiting for the puppy to leave YouTube. And then YouTube keeps showing me more puppies. And you know, the, the, the once you watch one puppy, uh, YouTube starts suggesting for you other puppies and uh, but then I made a prayer to Allah and then all the puppies they are gone and now there's no puppies in YouTube so I was able to get in and uh, thanks all thanks to the the Shin God uh, he made the, the clear the way for me and I'm here for you as you see and no puppy can stop me our topic today that the truth about Jesus uh, Mimi Hijab he made the video singing the Quran when he you know as usual he add echo to make the Quran sound good <laughs> recite the Quran without a software potato so people can laugh uh, and in the Quran it says this is the truth about Jesus but before we talk about the truth about Jesus who is talking about Jesus shouldn't we check first the one who is talking about Jesus who is he you know when somebody want to talk about Jesus, uh, to tell us the truth, go back on time, like not now, today, you know, going back on time, let us say, I was not in the time of Jesus. And I'm not a historian who study books, spend my life studying history. I study books, yes, but uh, not really too much of history books because I'm, you know, fairly convinced that books of history is written by victorious people. Like as an example, if Hitler was victorious, uh, every book will write that Hitler was a great man. If Hitler, Hitler he lost, you know, everybody says Hitler is a bad guy. Remember, regardless of he is bad or good, but this is, you know, victory, uh, history written always by the one who make victory. Uh, then he burned all the books and he burned even the one who write books against him. And this is exactly what the Muslim did through centuries. Anyone who speak against the history of Muhammad, they try and they did burn them, kill them. Actually, right away when Muhammad died, there's a war, it's called the War of Apostate. That is the first attempt to burn history and they did. But just to introduce to you, who is Muhammad? And if we can listen to him and consider him to be a person who can tell us about Jesus. Muhammad is a person who Muslim believe that he received his information from God. Therefore, the information is trustworthy. Therefore, there is nothing wrong with it. Therefore, Muhammad is not stupid. Well, I will let you judge if he is or not. Um. Aisha says, can you please explain the hadith about why we should kill the house lizard? First of all, the house lizard, I think they call it salamander or something like that. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, the, the house lizard is an insect, an insect that is harmful. Some of it <laughs> cause a lot of these lizard, salamander, geigo, they are insect. Islam, the smart Muhammad, he told them that geigo, lizard, and all his cousins, they are insect. Uh, no comment. Okay. Diseases. And some say that it intends to walk over the food and the, the drinks and to poo. Actually, I saw once, honestly, I swear by the shin of Allah, 
I saw once a lizard in a restaurant. I was in, in you know, overseas. The lizard, he took off his pants. You know, over the drink of a guy he was drinking, he did not notice. You know, and the funny is that his uh, the guy was drinking beer, so I had not even noticed because they looked the same. Yeah, yeah. What he do? He what he he do, he piss over the it, he intend to do that? Mm. Where it puts a lot of its illnesses and diseases and people's food. Oh. So. In general, it is a dangerous creature. Absolutely. That only brings harm to the people mm. in general. Yeah. And if you notice that I anything noticed. that is harmful, yeah. Islam tells us to kill. Yeah, like, you know, Christian Prince, as an example. <laughs> <laughs> anything is harmful. <laughs> This is the guy, his name is Muhammad. Want to tell us the truth about Jesus? Tell us more, tell us more, please. Tell us more truth story, you know. So Islam tells us uh -huh. to kill a wild dog that bites and attacks people. Liar. Islam tells us to, to, to kill all dogs. And when people, they complain, Muhammad, he changed his mind. He said, okay, keep the guardian dog and kill. However, you kill every black dog. Why you lie? Why? Why? Dog who bite. <laughs> if there's a dog, don't bite in the world. Well, hello. Okay. It tells us to kill mice because they spread all types of diseases. Plague is. Yeah. Yeah. But we will go to the mice soon. Because the only religion who made fatwa against Mickey Mouse is Islam. Mickey Mouse is a cartoon. You see, the Islamic religion, the second you you know you are a Muslim, you are possessed by, by the devil. They want to kill Mickey Mouse the cartoon. If you don't believe me, you can search right now in Google, search fatwa against Mickey Mouse to be killed. He's wanted. By the way, Mickey Mouse say hello, it's fine, you know, it's okay, you know. He is under witness protection program. <laughs> it's one of, they are most infamous for. And also, they cause fire in house. Exactly. Muhammad, he said, they, you know, mice, they cause fire. Actually, I heard that the fire department, they made an agreement uh, with, the, with the crony, the king of the mices, uh, this is why there's a store in America, it's called Macy's, you know, so the mice, like, you know, they gave him the store. They said, okay, we will give you the whole store, okay? So this is why they called Macy's, because it's coming from mice. So they gave uh, Macy's, and they told him, please don't make, a, like, a fire in our town as a return, you know? And now those mice, like, you know, they're living in Macy's, having fun, you know, in the winter they were, you know, priced as coat, uh, you open the purse, uh, the expensive purse, you will find the mice in like, their home. You know, they are, they have an agreement with the, yeah. Okay, they, they cause fire. Uh, okay, and? As in the, play, in, in the hadith of the Prophet, it tells us, mice do heinous things. Heinous. Though people nowadays are so fond of them. Mm. We're told to kill the crows. Oh. A what? crow. Yeah, why, why you want to kill it? Because it's a black. That also carries diseases and eats uh, uh, dead meat. There is, I mean, there is a million animals that eat dead meat, you stupid idiot. Don't you, as a human, eat dead meat? Don't you? Don't you? What do you eat? Do you eat a live meat? Hmm? Your chicken, chicken, chicken. We're ordered to kill snakes. Mm. We're ordered. No, snakes. No, 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 no. Muhammad, he told them, if you see a snake in your house, you give her a warning to leave because she is a genie. <laughs> you give her a warning three days to leave. <laughs> If there is any Muslim you want to say I'm lying, challenge me. <laughs> I can show you the reference in a second. <laughs>
three days. Hey, snake, listen, I give you three days warning to leave. If you don't leave, then I have to kill you. Three days, she will kill all your kids, you idiot. Three days, you give the snake warning. <laughs> And the snake, she is looking at the guy like, what the heck with this guy? He can kill me. He just got me in the corner. And now he's talking to me. <laughs> uh, you know, this is the guy he want to tell us about the truth about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, like when when somebody uh, when when somebody he uh, uh, you know he claimed to be a prophet of God, you expect like somebody uh, forget about the beard. The beard doesn't make you wise, by the way. Uh, even goats have beards, so <laughs> they have a long one. So beard doesn't make you really wise or anything. Even age. You know, there's a lot of people. They they get older, even they get they get the teenager, and their behavior. Uh, when you when you speak about somebody, uh, he claimed to be a prophet. And then he say, such a stupid thing. When you see a snake in the house, possibly it is a Muslim snake. It's a genie. You give it a three-day warning. And after that, this is snake, if she did not leave because you gave her a warning, she is a genie, then you have to kill the snake. And this is in Sahih Muslim. Let me try to find you the hadith. Remember, our topic is about the truth about Jesus, but we are going there, you know. No need to rush. It's just for fun. Hmm. We went to visit Abu Sa'id al-Khudari. While we were sitting, on, we heard a movement under the couch, his couch. We had, uh, uh, when we had looked, we found a snake in it and jumped up to kill it. But Abu Sa'id, who was engaged in a prayer, made a gesture to me indicating that I should sit down. So I sat down. When he finished, he pointed to the room in the house and he asked uh, and asked if I saw it then I said uh, I did he told me that the servant of there who had recently been married had occupied then went out uh, with God messenger to the tench whatever blah 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 and then okay let, let, let us go to the story so he told him a story about what happened when he went with Muhammad and uh, they saw a, a snake in the door. And when he wanted to kill her, the snake, he told the man or the person who want to kill the snake, but 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 your uh, but your arrow, you know, don't don't throw your arrow at the snake, don't kill it. Put away his lens and enter the house to see what had made her come out. He entered and he found a huge snake, called it cold and uh, on the and the in the bedding. So he made for it with a lens and burst it with it so this guy now uh, like he, he you know he, he hit the snake but the snake quivered and attacked him no one which of them died no one knows what should it's a story 
first the snake or the young man then went to God messenger and mentioned the incident to him asking him to supplication to Allah to restore him restore his life they think he's Jesus for them but he replied ask forgiveness for your friends he said these house have resident jinn so when you see one of them give them a warning three time if it goes away well and good otherwise kill it why because the snake is an infidel This is the man who want to tell us about Jesus. This snake is a Muslim believer, Muslim genie believer. If it leave, after he give it the warning. If it's not leaving, after the three warning or three days. Kill it. And Muhammad, he claimed in the same story in front of us that when he was, he, he claimed that in the city of Medina, there is a bunch of genie who converted to Islam, as you see. He said, in the city of Medina, Medina, by the way, it's a word means city. This is not the name of the city, you know. Muhammad, when he hijacked from the Jews, he changed the name. He called it Medina, which means a city. There are the, uh, in Medina, there are jinn who have accepted Islam. So when you see one of them, pronounce warning to it for three days. If it appear to you after that, kill it, for it is only a devil. This is the man he want to teach us about Jesus. Let us go back to Sheikh uh, Susu Dudu, Potato. Uh, tell us what happened to the lizard. What uh, I like the lizard story. You know, I like to listen to the, those stories. They are really fantastic story. Where is the story? Okay, hold on. What is the story of the lizard? Yeah, it's here. It's here. We continue with the lizard. Further to kill scorpions, and these by nature are harmful for people. So killing them is justifiable and it's a legitimate thing to do. Likewise with the house lizards. Mm. And there is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where the Prophet told us alayhi salatu wasalam that when Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was thrown by his people in the blazing fire. All the creatures of Allah used to try and put off the fire, with the exception of the house lizard. Except that's it. It used to try to blow so that the fire would grow. Shall we change? Shall, shall we? Shall we change the title to make it the truth about Abraham? Here we go. We found the truth. They want to burn Abraham. All the creatures of the world, even pigs, cats, rats, dogs, everybody, elephants. They came from everywhere to stop the fire on Abraham, except the filthy son of Mut'a, Mister Lizard. And this is the guy, his name is Muhammad, the son of Kilab, which means dogs. I'm not joking, by the way, this is his last name. He want to tell us the truth about Jesus. Muhammad is the one chosen to tell us the truth about Jesus. A person who never met Jesus, and never saw Jesus, he came 600 years after Jesus. The Muslim, they claim even he do not know how to read, how to write.
When the Mohammedan they say, hey, how you accept the Bible written 60 years after Jesus? They, they bring us somebody 600 years and then you don't even know how to write his name, according to them. With all the stupid story, and now he is the one who can tell us the truth about Jesus. What happened to the desert? What hold? What, I did I not get it? You know, I'm sometimes not smart. Thrown by his people in the blazing fire, Salatu Salam, that when Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, was thrown by his people in the blazing fire, all the creatures of Allah used to try and put off the fire with the exception of the house lizard. It used to try to blow so that the fire would grow. Mm. And this shows you that our relationship, not only with people, mm. with everything else is dependent on our belief in Allah Azza wa Jalla exactly. and our allegiance oh. to his religion and to the righteous and pious people. Hmm. So now this is why we should kill the lizard. He tried to kill Abraham, peace be upon him, and he blow air at him to burn him. And you know, here you see the stupidity of this religion. In one hand, they say to you, why do you have to die for your sin? Shouldn't everyone pay for his mistake? Okay, why the lizard who is exist today <laughs> is going to be killed for his... <laughs> Do you see how stupid this religion is? So let us say for the sake of argument, you know, this story is not fiction, is it, is it true? So I am Abraham, and there's a lizard who is trying to burn me, which is very funny, you know, I mean. <laughs> so why you wanna kill the lizard today? I mean, what what, <laughs> what is the connection? <laughs> Do you think he taught his kids to hate Abraham too? You know, he's a... Like the lizard before he dies, he says, listen, kids, from now on you teach your kids. And the kids, they teach the kids. They come from the egg, they start teaching them. Don't, don't like Abraham, okay? We are anti-Abrahamic. We are anti-Semitic too. Oh, yeah. If you see a Jew, bite him. If you see a Muslim, kill him. If you see a Christian, eat his ears. Oh, you know, we are the lizard. You know, and all of this, brother, all of this drama coming from the one who will tell us the truth. What his name? Muhammad. Muhammad, peace be upon him. I mean, you know, you have to think about it. Twice. Isn't it obvious? that this is really the enemy of God. I will show you an example of this enemy, which I prefer his picture a lot because it remind me of, uh, of Muhammad when he was a kid. Look at him. Isn't it obvious that this guy, he don't respect Allah. Isn't it obvious that this is the one who tried to kill Prophet Adam, peace be upon him? Let me zoom out to show you how evil he is. Think about it. Just be honest with yourself for a second. He have even no shame for what his grandfather did. He should be wearing sunglasses, putting a mask, so body wouldn't know, like, oh, please, don't look at me, I'm ashamed of my what my grandfather did. No, he is smiling, taking selfie, he bought selfie stick from Amazon, taking selfie, he have an account in TikTok, and he go, and you know, he do his, you know, his, uh, he, he do what lizard do. What he do, they do? They eat mosquitoes. What I know about lizard, that they are the best for insect controls. <laughs> Actually, he, Farmers, they love to see them around. <laughs> you stupid idiot. If we kill lizard, we are in trouble. Frogs, lizard, those, they eat mosquitoes. They eat harmful insects. They, they don't eat bees. So you, you stupid you. You want to kill lizard. 
because the truth teller, the prophet who tell the truth, he told you that he, this guy, grand, 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 blow air at the fire of Abraham. One lizard did that. <laughs> you know what? Next time tell your prophet to make a better lie. I mean, shouldn't you say like an army of lizard king? One lizard, okay, let's say there's a man. Now they want to burn him. I mean, there's a fire already. And there is all the creatures in the world trying to put down the fire. But there is one lizard, one lizard is blown air. Just think about it, guys. For the sake of the shin of Allah. All the creatures, look, it's not me who said all the creatures. He said that, you know, if you don't hear it, I will play it again. Most of you are deaf, you know, because you are not, uh, uh, you don't have big ears like us Arab. We hear very well, you know, we hear anything except what don't, except like things we don't like. So, look, look, all the creatures, brother, all the creatures, they came to stop the fire. We're ordered to kill snakes. We're ordered to kill scorpions. And these, by nature, are harmful for people. So killing them is justifiable and it's a legitimate thing to do. Likewise with the house lizards. Oh. And there is a hadith yeah, yeah. in Sahih al-Bukhari mm. where the Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, that when Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, Peace, peace. was thrown by his people in the blazing fire, all the creatures of Allah used to try and put off the fire. Okay, so what we confirmed is all the creatures. If there's any creature left, people, did this guy, he said that Muhammad said, all the creatures, I will go with the story. So now we have massive numbers of uh, creatures, all the creatures, not only one kind, all of them, all, they come from around the world. It, it, some of them, if they would even take it, and they come from China, from uh, Philippines, you know, actually I saw, uh, you know, I saw an elephant came from Korea and he was full, his mouth was full of kimchi. I'm telling you, I saw it. Because a lot of this elephant in Korea, you know, they eat kimchi and that's why they grow so big. So all the elephants in the world, nobody is missing. They came to stop the fire. Let me give you an idea because most of you, you have you are not even uh, you are not even catching the image. Okay. Now hold on. Let us go here. All uh, is this one included? Oh boy. I hope not. I mean, his ears alone can wave a lot of... I mean, if you say this guy, he was waving his ears to make the fire go crazy, I can take it more. So listen, listen, listen. All the animals sound like a goal. Goal. Yeah. All the animals, they come from around the world. The creatures, all the creatures. Versus... Versus what? Versus a lizard. How in the world that story can make any sense, you stupid idiot donkey? I mean, the elephant alone, he can stop the fire one, one shot. So what the lizard, the little, small, tiny lizard, what he can do? What, do you mean? what, what the heck is that? The elephant was there, the cows was there, the bear was there, the, the lion, the tigers, the giraffe, I mean, everybody, was there, even the camel. All the animals, they came from Alaska, they came from everywhere, you know. I mean, we have, uh, we have eyewitnesses for the story. And remember, Muhammad, he told the truth, you know. Yeah, and actually... I heard, I heard, I don't know if this is uh, accurate because all of them, they came, yes, but not all of them, they were trying to stop the fire. There is one of them, like he was, like them one, two, three, he count. His name is Mr. Parrot. You know, like one, two, three, and they throw water in the same time so they can stop the fire in the same time. You know, it's a true story, by the way. You know? 
Yeah, and uh, I heard even that there is uh, uh, two twin puppies. They paid their life for you know in the day of uh, like uh, trying to save Prophet Ibra uh, Ibrahim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, and and everybody was really upset from the banda because the banda was so slow. Like banda, please drink water, man. What are you doing? He said to them, "Don't you know that I'm so slow?" Okay, where is the water? Like the band, the man, the band is so slow. By the time he arrived, the fire was stopped. Abraham had ten kids, and he moved to different territory. And the band, where he came, his where is the fire to stop it? Muhammad, he told the truth, brother. I mean, Muhammad, are you kidding me? Nobody can deny that. I mean, he, this guy, he's a, one of my witnesses. Even the little one, they were watching from me. I like, you know, like they said, okay, I'm, I'm small, but I'm going to watch. The elephant, they came by waves. All of them, they come from Alaska. You know, at that time, there's no uh, elephant in India, you know, uh, because at that time, there's no curry. And, uh, you know, this is why they move, actually, because when the Alaskan people, they stop uh, growing curry in uh, Kira, Kira Lanka, uh, the elephant, they decide to uh immigrated you know took visa and uh, they went to india and they start uh, eating curry and you know this is why they sneeze a lot like hachu you know curry stuff yeah so true story and this guy muhammad is the one who to tell us the truth about jesus <laughs> yeah yeah why are you surprised Look at those, even the animals, they were surprised. Muhammad, yes, Muhammad. You know, he tells us the story about Abraham, as you see. Nobody knows the story. If you ask them, okay, where did Muhammad get this story from? Allah? Allah told him. Yes, brother. You know? We have a Muslim here, his name is Abdul Rahman. Hey, Abdul Rahman, you want to call me, my friend? Do you like to call me, or you are just uh, protesting in the chat? Maybe you are just a, a, a strong person in the chat, but you are weak in talking to me. Anyway, if your mom, she allow you to call me, let me know. My Skype is open. So, this is the person his name is Muhammad, and this is not his real name, as we know. The one who want to tell us the truth about Jesus. So the question is, can we take Muhammad seriously? I don't think anyone can take such a man seriously. And then, if we go to the Quran and see what Muhammad said about Jesus, let us see if we can take whatever, anything he said, seriously. The Quran actually doesn't say anything about Jesus. They speak about a guy, his name is Isa. His mother, her name is Maryam. She is the daughter of Amran. But all of us, we knew that Amran is not the father of, the, you know, of, of Mary. Amran, even the name is wrong is Umram is the father of Moses. In a miraculous way, Muhammad, he took the name of the father of Moses and he made him the father of Mary. And then he come with a new name, Isa. Where this name coming from, nobody knows. Some they say maybe he took it from Isa. I say no. Because you see, Muhammad is a person who live in the Middle East and in the Middle East, Christians, Aramaic, Christian, Arab, they never use such a name. They don't. Until now, in Arabic, we say, you see in the Aramaic, sometimes you see the scene as S, sometimes you say it as Ish. So there's Yeshua and Yeshua. That's it. We do not know other name. Yeshua or Yeshua. We don't have Isa. And there's a huge difference. And not to forget to mention that Muhammad, because he is ignorant, 
he learned that there's a woman, her name is Maryam. She is the sister of Aaron. And then he called Mary the sister of Aaron. And when a Jewish man, Rabbi, he came to him and he said, well, you know what? Uh, he came to uh, to uh, uh, to Aisha, his his his, uh, his child wife. He said to her, "Well, as I know, there is hundreds of years, even the number there is not right, uh, between Mary and Aaron. How she is his sister?" She said to him, "Kadept," which means you lied. You lied, which means reading Muhammad is what he meant. And then when Muhammad he learned that he started to fix it, he started to duct tape. He says at that time they used to call them by their uh, uh, great ancestors, but but Aaron is not Mary, is not even from the tribe of Aaron. Same time, if you want to call her by the name of a prophet, you call her by the name of Moses, because Moses is more important prophet than Aaron. Why she is a sister of Aaron? Because this is exactly what mentioned in the Old Testament. So Muhammad, he learned from the Jews that Maryam is the sister of Aaron, and now he is claiming. And this is why you will notice, look, where is the story located? In the chapter of Maryam. And Mimi Hijab, he made a short video reciting those verses. And what the verse says that when, when the Jews, they came to, uh, to Mary, uh, and they said to her, O oh, sister of Aaron, and we do not know why even they want to say such a thing. The father was a, your father was not a man of evil, nor your mother, a, you know, woman and chest. By the way, this is false translation. Uh, uh, the the word here is not doesn't say chest. It says it, it says she was not a bitch. In Arabic, excuse my language, the word is bariya. Bariya. Bariya mean a whore, a bitch. So your father was not a bad person and your mother was not a whore. So she appointed her finger at the baby. And then they say, and they said, how can we talk to one who is a child in the cradle? Now here we ask yourself, how even they knew that she is telling them to talk to him? How you assume that? I'm asking you, you point your finger at the child. What does that mean? How did, how did you know that he, she is asking asking them to talk to him? Uh, the story is stupid. And then he said, suddenly Jesus is talking, saying, he said, I am indeed the servant of Allah. He has given me revelation and made me a prophet. And here you see here the stupid point. Jesus is born with revelation. He's born with it. But the Quran says in different verse that Allah, he sent down the Injil to Isa. Where he sent it down? As you see, he is born with it. Same time, how come Muhammad wait 40 years and then the angel, they came to squeeze him and still Muhammad do not know what's going on. He says to him, uh, 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 what am I reading? What I can read? I cannot read. Jesus in the Quran is born with revelation. He is the word of God. And he has made me a blessed was ever I will be as or uh, like uh, enjoyed on me a prayer and charity as long as I live. Uh, so Allah, he told him, pray and do charity, Jesus. Okay. And then he made me kind of my mother, to, sorry, my, to my mother, and not overbearing or miserable. Okay. So peace is on me the day I was born, the day I, that I die, and the day that I shall be resurrected, raised to life again. And here you have to stop with this stupid story. Why is Jesus saying, peace on me? You 
In case you do not know what I'm saying, I will show you other verse in the Quran. We have to make, you know, uh, we have to make connection. If you go to chapter 19, the same chapter, you will see chapter 19, verse number 15, and uh, chapter 19, verse number 33. The difference between them, in chapter 19, verse number 15, it says, Salamun alayhi, peace on him, the day he was born. Who is this person we are talking about? This is supposedly the one, the Muslim, they call him Yahya. Even the name Muhammad, he got wrong. So, in the case of Yahya, Aka John the Baptist, it says, So peace on him in the day he was born, and the day that he dies, and the day that he will rise, will be rise again. In the case of Jesus, Jesus himself, he is giving himself peace. He said, peace on me, not peace given to me. Peace on me, as you see here, if we go down, you know, the verses we did read, you know. Peace is on me. Peace is on me. On the day I was born, the day that I died, and the day that I shall raised up to life again. So why it's peace on John, the Baptist, given from Allah, but Jesus saying, peace on me. Can you say peace on me? On me. The day I'm born, the day I die, the day I'm resurrected. And this is the story of Jesus, the one they are debating about. How he was. Uh, Muhammad, he finished the story. That's it. What do you want more? Now we know Maryam. She is the daughter of a guy. His name is Amran. She is the sister of Aaron. And Jesus spoke in the cradle. And this is how she proved that Jesus is not born from fornication. The one who considered the lizard the enemy of Allah and the black dog is the devil and all the fiction and stories of the flying carpet and Solomon, etc. is the one who want to tell us what happened and who is Jesus. But even though Muhammad is a stupid to the bone, he made mistakes, horrible mistakes, when he claimed that Amran, the father of Moses, even the Muslim, they agree Amran is the father of Moses. In fact, in Hebrew, it's not Amran, it is Umram, Umram. But Muhammad, because he's an idiot, he could not re repeat the name correctly. He made him Amran. So Umram became Amran. Uh, Mistake about the name, the identity of Mary, father, about uh, her, Mary being the sister of Aaron, uh, Mary the, being the daughter of Amran, and Jesus uh, spoke in the cradle. And this is a story we know where it's taken from, from books even written long after Christianity have nothing to do. All the Christians refuse it because it's a fairy tale. So Muhammad, he collected stories from whatever he hear. This is why the Quran if you remember in the chapter of Atoba, uh, chapter 9, uh, they call him that he is an ear. He's what? He's an ear. What does that mean? He is a person, whatever you say to him, he put it in his book. And this is what happened when they asked him about Zul Qurnayn, if you remember. So they, they, you know, look at this. The Arab, they said, Muhammad is just an ear. Oh, he's an ear. Oh, what is that? Whatever you say to him, he listen, and he believe. 
So the Jews, they came to Muhammad. They told him, what do you tell us? Can you tell us about the Prophet Zulkarnain? But the Jews don't believe in Zulkarnain. This is Alexander the Great. How this is a prophet of God? The stupid Muhammad, he took it for granted. The Jews, they say he's a prophet. That's it. We will have to say that that means a prophet. So suddenly, Alexander the Great sent by Allah. And then we have the story of Gog and Magog and the story of him building a dam. And we know a lot of Muslims are leaving Islam, you know, because of this story. A very heavy duty fiction story about Zulkarnain building a dam between two, uh, uh, between humans and uh, the Turkish tribes. According to Muhammad, the Gog and Magog, they are Turkish. One, there are 22 Turkish tribes. One of them is the Turkey we know today, which is not really Turkey. Those people are the, the, the Gog and Magog, according to Muhammad. When, when Zulkarnain, he built the dam uh, between the two nations, between us as a human, and those people, Gog and Magog, uh, one, uh, the tribe of Erdogan, they were going for a hunt. <laughs> this is why they are not <laughs> behind the dam. They set loose. <laughs> so, uh, this is the guy who want to tell us the story about Jesus. Uh, Alexander the Great, he be his name become the guy with the two horn. What his name? I mean, the guy don't have a name. You see, how come you say to us, Muhammad the son of Abdullah, David the son of etc., Suleiman the son of etc., Mary the sister of Aaron. Okay, how come this guy, who is Zulkarnain? Who is this guy? Muhammad saying, our friend Muhammad here saying, Gog and Magog is real. It's happening in dimensions you cannot see. That's deep. I like it when Muslims, they give you a mysterious answer. Look at this technology. Don't tell the word dimension to your prophet. He make a chapter, call it the chapter of dimension. And then he will start describing his wife, vagina. It is long, it's wide. It's smelly, it's disgusting. And okay, okay, no, we don't want to go there. Gog and Magog is real. It's happening in dimension you cannot see. Okay, how long you are thinking about it, my friend? So how you cannot see it, yet it's happening in dimension. I mean, can you call me and tell me how you saw the dimension when you cannot see it? When you say dimensions, I mean dimension mean dimensions. So you were able to see the dimension which you cannot see. Mm. Now you do not need to say Shahada. I know for sure you are a Muslim because this is a statement of a fool. So, Zulkarnain, <clears throat> a story, you know, I don't want to even mention like the flying carpet of Suleiman. Suleiman is speaking to the ant, the ant, you know, the truth about the ant. Should we make a video the truth about the ant and Suleiman? The ant who told the ant to hide, otherwise Suleiman will crush you. And then Suleiman, he brought her to the court. He said to her, why you say that? Don't you know I am just? She said, I don't want the ant. You don't, you misunderstood me. I don't want them to be crushed, their heart, their faith. When they see the beauty Allah, he gave you, you know, the ant, she's in love with Suleiman. What you can say? I mean, he's so good looking. The ant, she was afraid that the ant, when she saw him, they will start masturbating. They will not behave. She showed, told them to hide, otherwise Suleiman will crush you. She meant they will crush your heart. Makes sense. Prophet of Allah, he knew everything. And this is the guy who claim that Gog and Magog are real, and Zulkarnain Aka Alexander the Great built a dam between us and them, and until now we cannot find this dam, damn you, which is made from iron and copper. Look, look what you know, look what he said. 
Bring me blocks of iron at length. There's length. Mm. And he filled the space with iron. I mean, how much iron, how many tons of iron to, to close an area between two mountains and now those Gog and Magog, they cannot come. By the way, isn't it this is a proof that the earth is a flat in Islam? Because if I build a wall between me and my neighbor, can't he go around it? I mean, it's just between two between two mountains. The wall is not like surrounding the whole earth. This is the guy who want to tell us about the truth about Jesus. He got his name wrong. He got his uh, grandfather wrong, if we can say the word grandfather. Ah, hold on. In the Quran, Mary, she was a nun. What? Yes, brother, she was a nun, brother. What are you talking about? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> are you sure, Muhammad? Yes, 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 yes. Come on, Muhammad. Absolutely, I'm sure, brother. What are you kidding? You know? Yeah. Mm. Let us see how Mary she decided become to become a nun. In chapter 3, verse number 37, suddenly Mary, she have no father. Okay, her father is uh, uh, Amran, but now Zechariah is taking care of her. Why? Don't ask. Okay, now. So Zechariah, he took care of Mary. He made her, okay, what, what, what Zechariah have connection with this? Any Muslim can tell me? I mean, how we jump from Amran to Zechariah. Shouldn't you tell us first, okay, what, 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 who or why, what, what happened? Maybe she was an orphan. Maybe her dad, he died in car accident. You tell us what happened. Yeah, suddenly, her father is Amran. Her mother is the wife of Amran. And then Zechariah, he take care of her. Why? Don't ask. All right. So now Zechariah, he took her and she lived in the Mihrab. You know, Mihrab is the holy of holiness for the Jews where, you know, the, Muhammad is using a word trying to describe what the Jews they have. Like in the temple, in the temple, there's an area only priests they can get in. How in the world the woman she is living there? The Jews don't allow even normal people to get in. Men, even rabbi, they have to be high priest. So Mary, she was living in the chamber where in the, in the temple, and she spent her life there. And each time, Zechariah, he opened the, 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 the chamber, he found a lot of food in the room of Mary. The door is locked. Mary is behind the door. The guy who opened the door, he found Mary. She have lobster, shrimp, I mean, you name it, man. Fruit, apple, cherries. I mean, whatever whatever you wish, Mary, uh, Allah, he sent. Each time he, and he, and he asked her, where this is from? He found her, listen carefully, supplied with sustains. He said, oh, Mary, uh, whence this has come to you? Mary, instead of saying Amazon, I ordered online, she cannot say that at that time. There's no Amazon. Doesn't make sense, you know. So what Allah He sent? Okay. Oh. Why Allah is not feeding the mother of Muhammad? I mean, why those things happen to Jesus' mother? If there is any human being in the world, he sat inside his room, and then God sent him food non-stop every day. 
Can the Muslim tell us why? What is special about Mary? Who is more important, the mother of Muhammad or Mary? Shouldn't Muhammad, the baby, be fed? Hello? It's me you're looking for? You have to feed the mother of Muhammad, so Muhammad will be healthy, will not be sick as he is. So, Muhammad is the person who want to tell us the truth about Jesus. And part of the truth is that Mary, she have a full refrigerator full of food. She eat food more. She eat, you know, thank God, Mary, she wasn't an American. Otherwise, she would be the size of my house. I mean, those Americans, they eat nonstop. You go in Walmart, you will see a person like holding a sandwich and he is driving the a scooter, you know, like you know, he's doing shopping for food. He's eating now, and he is buying a lot. America, welcome to America. Imagine if every American he have unlimited supply of a French fries. Hmm. Did I say French fries? Muhammad will tell us the story about Mary. What he knew about Mary. What even Mary mean? Do Muhammad knew what Mary, Maryam mean? Do even he knew the name Zechariah? Look, look, just wait. If you see here the word Zechariah. Zechariah. There is a Muslim. I forgot his name. Stupid Muslim. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, this guy with his name, Daniel, something, whatever his name. The one who said you can have sex with babies. As usual, they are pervert like their prophet. He said Yahweh is a pagan god. <laughs> but the fact the Zechariah is is a name contained the word. You see, this is a summarize of God. What God he says to Moses, who I am. But this word have no meaning in the Quran. No Muslim can tell you why and what Zechariah mean. Remember, and Yahweh, Yahweh or Yahweh. God remember. And this is a proof that Muhammad is a fraud because this name is not part of the 99 attribute to Allah, neither is his name. The personal name of, of the God of Muhammadan is Allah, which means the moon God. Al is a word meaning God in the old Aramaic. La is the name. In the Arabic today, Al is a word meaning the. La is the name of the God. So either one you use it, the la or the old Arami, the name of the God of Islam is La. But when Muhammad he copied the names from the Bible, he is obviously an idiot. He did not know what the name mean. As an example, the Muslim they say the Messiah. Okay, what Messiah mean? They don't know. You believe it or not, even in their books of tafsir interpretation, they say that the Messiah was called Messiah because he had a flat feet. Yeah, I saw him, the Messiah was with me. When I joined the USA Army, you know, we walk in uh, like in a with uh, uh, mate, uh, you know, mat like uh, on the floor, and they see your feet, and then if you have a flat feet, you cannot join the army, brother. And the Messiah was there. He had a flat feet. He told him, sorry, we cannot join the USA Army. Because they don't know. They are ignorant. They're like their prophet. They do not know what those names mean. And then Muhammad, he decided to tell us about how Jesus was crucified. And then the drama started. And you will see every Muslim have different interpretation for the story. Either interpretation is stupid. And I will give you an example.
when they saw him die on the cross, they were convinced he could not have been the Messiah. What they did not know was that Allah made it appear to them that he was crucified. Mm. What's the definition of crucifixion? It is that you should die by hanging on the cross. What is the definition of death? Are you asking me to be stupid and to believe in Muhammad? The second you believe in such an idiot, you are dead. Death, that's it, your brain doesn't function. Answer. The definition of death is that Allah should send the angel to take the soul. Hmm. I have a problem with this one. Yeah, Allah cannot take the soul of everybody, especially if you if you play karaoke. I have a friend; his name is Moshe. The angel of death came to kill him, and uh, Moshe, you know, like he spoke to him in Hebrew. He said, "Chim ho he." This is Hebrew, by the way. This is not Chinese. You might you might be you know uh, thinking that I'm speaking Mandarin language in China. No, I drink Mandarin. I don't speak Chinese. You know, I just, just I don't like. So I speak like my own Chinese. So anyway, uh, when Moses, uh, he saw the angel of death. Let us see, I'll get you the hadith in English. Maybe I should look for a video, play it in video, it would be nicer. No? More entertaining. The stories of Muhammad. True story, brother, this is true story. Yeah. Let us see this one. Hmm. Where is the hadith? Okay. There are stones of one of them, but I want one hadith only. Okay, here we go. Abu Huraira reported that the angel of death was sent. This is from Muhammad, by the way. When, when, when they say Abu Huraira reported, this is from Muhammad. Muhammad said, when the angel of death sent uh, to Moses, peace be upon him, to inform from his Lord, of his Lord, summons. So Allah will call him now, it's time to die. When he came, he, Moses, boxed him. Oh. and his eyes his eye was knocked out I mean we see that all the time you know very normal you see the guy like his eye big you know like on his nose he the angel of death came back to his lord and he said to him you send me to a servant who do not want to die Allah restored his eye to its pro proper place. Where is that? His anus? I'm just wondering. I mean, where is the eyes of the angel? Proper place? Should he restore it in different place? I'm not sure what does that mean. And then, oh, between two brackets, he revived his eyesight. He lost his eyesight too. Imagine you're an angel of Allah. You have 600 wings and you are almighty in the size and power 
and then a little uh, Jew, he box you. And, uh, and, and the angel, he lost the fight from the first boxing. And then the brother, okay, and then said, go back to him. Allah told the angel, okay, what the heck, he just beat him. You are sending the same victim to the same criminal again. At least send with him some army. Like send, send with him Joe Biden as an example, Nancy Pelosi, something scary. I mean, what's wrong with you? Go back to him and tell him that if you want to uh, life, he must uh, place his hand on the back of an ox. You know what? All my life I know that Moses, he is a Texan from Texas and he is a cowboy. Otherwise, you tell me why Moses have a cow there. I mean, why he chose a what, what about say a donkey? Obviously, Moses was a Texan and you know, like okay, go outside in the farm. He, he, he you know, like hoo, you know, he called the ox, you know, he put his hand at the top of the ox, and you live same years as many here, and the, but that means he would live like ten thousand. Do you know how many here in the top of the ox? What do you mean? Uh, what if he placed it in his head? This is how you can change the years of. Uh, <laughs> You know, I was always trying to catch the image of Moses. And uh, I could not really figure out, you know, how really uh, Moses looked like. But then, uh, after watching, I mean, watching Quran, I watch Quran, I don't really, I don't really, you know, uh, read Quran because Quran is a is a cartoon. So uh, it turned to be that uh, this is Moses. We speak upon him. He was a cowboy. Uh, where, did, where did the picture go? Hold on. What the heck? You can't take things for granted these days. And look, if you don't believe me, do you see the scarf around his neck? Can you explain to me why this cowboy is a Jew? I'm just asking a question. Those Christians don't believe that Moses, he really does that. So how and what you say about such a, st such a story, such, a, such a picture, don't they say that one picture is better than a one million uh, word? Do you see the Jewish scarf around his neck? Now you, now you Christian deny it. You say I see nothing. Yeah, yeah. Go blind as usual. Say I saw nothing. I know nothing. Where, where? It's in the front of you. It's around his neck. This is a Jewish, uh, you know, uh, uh, lefha. And do you see the star of David there? He have the star of David over his head. He have the star of David in his belt. He have the the Jewish things around his uh, neck, and yeah, and so so what if you are an angel? You are an angel, and look, because Moses was very nice, he did not use his guns. I'm telling you, he was nice. He just used one hand. He took the eye. Of, he didn't want to kill him. By the way, he didn't want to kill him. You know, he knew that this guy worked for Allah. I mean, it's not his fault. You know, Moses says to himself, I mean, this idiot is coming to take my life. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You know who I am. I'm a Jew. You know? First you pay your credit card, and then we can talk. The stupid uh, angel, he did not pay Moses. So, I uh, know, he, Moses, he, Moses, the angel until now did not know why he did beat him. You stupid, you have to pay first. You have to do business with him. Moses, don't waste his time. This is what Muhammad knew about Moses. 
And he is the one who tells us the truth about Jesus. Don't you think this is too much knowledge and true knowledge? So, brothers and sisters, next time, if you see Moses, his cousins, anybody from his family, never tell him, I am the angel of death. He will take your eye. Now I know why the Jews, they say, I for an eye. <laughs> I thought it's for a different reason. And now I know why Moses, he decided to take the eye. You know, like you know what I'm saying, don't you? Oh, hold on. What about Muhammad, who want to tell the truth about Jesus? Tell us the truth about Moses chasing his stone. The Jews, once upon the time, there was a guy, his name is Moshe. He's a Jewish prophet. Moshe was shy. He don't like to take a shower in front of others. The Jews, brother, they spread rumors because Jews, you know, you know the Jews, you know the Jews, you know? I mean, you know what they do? Come on, you know, they, you know? As you see, those are authentic hadith, authentic story, all right? So, because he don't take shower with them, and this is Muhammad who tell us the truth about Jesus. I mean, his way decided to tell us the truth about Moses too. So Moses was very shy. You know, there's many people who are shy, like Muhammad himself, as an example. He was very shy. That's why he could not have kids. Each time his wife she said, "Take off your pant." Hey, you know, come on. I say, okay, here. And you know, she spent their life and no, no kids. The wife of Muhammad, she said, do women even have this charge? Yeah, he was shy. Even Aisha, she said, she never saw the private part of her husband. How? What they? What they used to do then? Either it was so small, and she have a weak vision, maybe, or it's not there. Anyway, Allah Messenger said. I like it when they say Allah Messenger say that's serious. Allah Messenger talking, sit down. Everybody sit down. Uh, there is some people that did not sit down. Muhammad here, Muhammad in the chat, my friend, sit down. You keep making a objection for what I say, but you don't want to call me. What I would do? Come on, man, sit down. No, no, you sit down first. No, I swear by Allah, Shin, you sit down first. No way, no way. Brother, you know, you see two Muslims in the front of the door of the movie theater, and each one of them says, no, brother, you go first. No, I swear by Allah. You go first. Uh, no way, absolutely. And there's like 50 people waiting behind them, and they are blocking the door. No way, brother, you, I swear by Allah, fingers. You go first. I swear by my wife and my children, you go first. No, listen to me. I'm getting serious now. You go first or else? <laughs> and then the other guy, he convinced, like, okay, okay, don't go that far, brother. I will get first in. Yeah, the drama. And then when when he say, okay, I will go first, the other guy go with him at the same time, and they hit their shoulder. It's a Charlie Chaplin movie. So now, Muhammad, who want to tell us the truth about Jesus, he decided to tell you the truth about Moses because he go back on time. He know everything. Moses and what you know about Moses and what you do not know about Moses Moses was a very shy man extremely shy man the most ever shy man. Commercial break. If you are looking to buy shy, shy from India, Sri Lanka, my cousins, they have the best. Buy shy from us, 
before Allah shy you. Shy is the best shy in Arabic mean tea. So shy, take it now or leave it. Otherwise, this is the last opportunity to make your purchase before, because we have only one order left. One order. We will take only the first 10 million calls, okay? But we have only one, one, one left. Back to the topic. Since Moshe was so shy, he don't even say when he want to leave goodbye. When he take a shower, he hide. He don't say why. The Jews just start wondering, what is the reason? How come? Why? They say there is something wrong. His testicles are sick with bing bong. If you like to play bing bong, we have a racket for you, and those are the best in Amazon. Number one sales. It's true, they have a very bad review, and nobody buying them, and we want to sell them to you almost for free. You pay only for shipping and handling. However, you will never receive the product because Allah is taking care of the shipping and handling. End of the commercial. So when they accuse Moses that his testicles have been bong, because they look like balls. By the way, they never saw them. But they were guessing. Hmm. Allah decide to clear his balls from all the accusation. He wanted to show them that Moses has good balls. So Allah thought about a trick. If you are looking for a trick, will not a trick you. We have no problem. We have Joe Biden. You listen to his speech. He will be tricked. He will have no idea what he is talking about. At the end of it, he will say, I am Joe Biden. Approve this message. If you like this message, please make donation for Joe Biden. If you like to vote for Trump. Thank you very much. End of commercial. So Allah, he said, I'm going to clear the reputation of the balls of Moses. I mean, come on, they are talking about the balls of a prophet. Do you know what balls you are talking about? Don't you know that Moses got balls? What a bad decision you made. We continue the series in the coming section. If you have a problem with your giving birth as a female and you have a section birth, they open your belly, they get the child out, we have a solution for you. Recite the Quran. The baby will never come out as a baby. You will have a diarrhea. Quran is the best. Forget about the rest. You will die laughing. The baby will die with you. And that's it. Your husband is happy. He get married from a new wife. And there's no baby and there's no child support. End of commercial. Going back to the topic. So Allah decided to clear balls of Moses. When Moses went to take a shower in secluded area, he put his clothing over a rock. Over a rock. Over a rock. 
And then Allah, he made the rock move. And the rock took the clothes of Moses. And the rock was rocking. If you like listen to rock and roll music, we have a CD for you. It's called Moses Rock and Roll. In fact, the name of the holy music is coming from this hadith. Rock and roll. This rock was rolling. However, we do not know how she was able to keep the clothing in the top of her. Yes, she was a female because Moses don't put his clothes over a male. Hello? <laughs> you kidding me? So the rock or roll name is coming from the name of Musa. So if you are interested in rock and roll, Arabian rock war, you know, Arabian Muhammad Prophet Allah, a rock and roll in Quran, yeah, man, that Quran will rock you. Actually, the fact will knock you, will make you feel like you are high without taking hashish. Unbelievable. End of commercial. Rock and roll. So Moses, he went to seclusion. He took off his clothes. He put them on a stone and he started taking the bath. When he had finished the bath, he moved toward the clothes to take them. But the stone, the stone, the stone took his clothes and fled. Moses picked up his stick. What a good pick. He book up his stick and he run after the stone saying, Oh stone, give me my garment. If you have a problem with your laundry and your garment is dirty and your wife is lazy, you do not know how to clean it. Use camel urine. It's a proven that the Italian used to use pee to do laundry. Prophet Muhammad, he used it as a detergent, same time as Pepsi Cola. End of commercial. So Moses, he said, O stone, give me my garment. Give me my garment. Till he reached the group of Bani Israel. He was running non-stop and the store running too he run she run he stop she stop she run he run until he found himself in the middle of jerusalem downtown walking down street naked downtown if you like to go downtown and you are looking for a restaurant, we have a best restaurant in the world. In this restaurant, we serve only halal food, which is approved by Allah. No pork. But by the way, we are not forbidden to eat zebra, donkeys. But they are not the house donkeys. Uh, lizard, uh, rats, uh, all kind of weird creatures, but no pork. So if you're interested, sign our restaurant. In the menu it says, Allah knows best what will happen to you after you eat in our food. Thank you very much. End of commercial. Mm. So when Moses he run after the stone and the stone keep running and he run after it and the stone never even take a break. Moses was good in marathon. In fact, he was number one in Greece. I heard that. It is documented. He keep running and then the stone, evil stone of Allah stop in the middle of downtown where all women, men, children busy in the market. And then the stone stopped. And everybody saw the penis and the balls of Moses. I cannot continue, sorry.
I have to delete this scene because this is for YouTube will take my video down. I mean, we're going to show you more. We have to stop here. Everybody downtown start looking at the balls of Moses. Women, they said, oh my Allah. Men, they said, oh Zibril. Children, they say, this guy, he have three legs. I mean, they could not believe what they are seeing. It's so good. And they found him, read with me, I'm not saying that. This is what the prophet says. And they found him the best of what Allah had created. Is it me who said the best? They are looking at what? Remember, the accusation for his balls and his penis. His penis and the balls are the best ever. Allah created. And you are telling me that Muhammad is not qualified to tell you the truth about Jesus? Well, here we go. He can even tell you the truth about the balls and the penis of Moses. How big they are beautiful and size does matter. I feel sorry for all those women at that time. They look at Moses, they look at their husband. They look at Moses, all the husband, they put their head down like, oh, please don't look, don't compare me. He's a prophet of Allah. What I can do? Allah, he made him have the best uh, tools. You know, what, why you are comparing between what I have and what Moses have? All the women, they were so disappointed. Moses have those. My husband don't. I heard, actually, the men, they disappear from town for the coming six months. They decide to take a vacation. The wife, they say, where are you going? I said, oh, you know, I need to go do hiking. She said, you're doing hiking, huh? Hiking? You think if you do hiking, it's going to get better? We saw what Moses have, and we saw what you have already. Right. Stay, stay here, stay here. What the heck is that? Hmm. And this is the guy who want to tell you the truth about Jesus. Aren't you convinced that Muhammad, he knew the truth? I'm not going to continue. Next time we will talk about the truth about Jesus' crucifixion, maybe. As you see, we open our Skype. Let me see, I see me a text message from somebody. Trinity, three God. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Let us see this guy. Let's call him. We have a Muslim. I hope he is not from Ghana. He said to me in Skype, you have three gods. <laughs> he is not answering. <laughs> okay, take care, potato. Um, do we have another Muslim? No. I listen to your show. I would like to speak to you. Why you want to speak to me? Trust me, you don't want to speak to me. You will go crazy. Yeah, there is no Muslim. The only Muslim he takes me, he refused to answer. So, people, be honest with yourself. Don't you think that Muhammad maybe is the only one who can tell us the truth about Jesus, about Moses, about Abraham? I mean, look, we even find out how the lizard was involved in the conspiracy against Abraham. Those informations, nobody knows, even the CIA. In fact, the name CIA was named after one of the lizard. You know what I'm saying? Because when Abraham, he pointed his finger at the lizard, you know, he noticed that all the animals, all the creatures are trying to stop the fire, except the lizard. He said, see, I, I, which means he's in pain. A, you know, like, 
uh, we, uh, okay, we got you. You know, like, uh, and, and do you un like understand? Like, you know, like, you know, in Arabic, you know, Arabic, you know. So, uh, C I A, like, see? I, you know, like, the lizard have big eyes, you know, like, I, A, you know, A is number one enemy. That's it, you know, get him. So, uh, this is where the name of CIA came, and this is all explained in the Sahih Bukhari, uh, you know, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And then, by the way, here I did not finish the story. When Moses, he got the Hajar, the, the, the rock stop, he took his clothing and he started beating the rock. Hmm. And I find it very amazing that the Jews, they were not wondering how in the world the stone is running by itself. They were wondering how wonderful the balls of Moses. It looked like at that time, stones run all the time and they still close. I mean, nobody noticed. I mean, like, they are not surprised that the stone is running with the clothing. They are, they are looking all of them at the balls and the penis of Moses. Hmm. I think those people who was in the time of Moses, they were Democrat. They don't see how Joe Biden looked like. Mm, you know, I mean, they look amazing for them. They don't see all the rocks he is throwing. Economy is bad, inflation, gas prices, all the crazy stuff. But look at his balls, man. He got balls. I mean, do you see the balls? So all the Jews downtown, nobody asked himself, like, what the heck? A rock carrying clothing in the top of it? What? And running? Nobody. Nobody. Even, do you see the whole story? is like, nothing happened. All what the story is about is about the balls and the penis of Moses. Because obviously, brothers and sisters, in the old days, those are radioactive rocks. They can move. They have uranium. Active uranium. I mean, don't you see what rocks can do? Rocks and roll. Did we have a good time? With the silly stupid Muhammad, who the Muhammadan are telling us that he is the one who can tell us the truth about Jesus. How many of you will download the video? And by the way, you can cut it pieces. As an example, you can make the movie about Moses, a video alone. And you name it the truth about Moses. People will love to watch this drama. The truth about Moses, about his balls, about the rock and roll. That all is a true story. And who is better than Prophet Muhammad to tell the truth? Take it or leave it. Christ is Lord. And the scam Muhammad got busted.